Hello everybody, welcome back to Tom Reads Things. My name is Tom, I hope you're all very, very well. Here I am, pictured with little Sally. <laughs> Wonderful Harry. And my other half, Mark. Um, I'm not doing a, I haven't got my face in the video today because I haven't had a shave and we've just taken the dogs out for a walk and it absolutely, hammered it down. We're looking after my sisters and um, Cocker Spaniel Juno as well uh, for a week. So we took them all out to wear them all out and um, it absolutely hammered it down. Uh, so I thought what better way to spend a Sunday than doing a little bookshelf tour. So I have recently got, um, look at Mark's face by the way, isn't he bloody adorable? He um, surprised me today. He uh, he can't keep a secret and he told me that he um, has booked for us to go to uh, Norway for a weekend in end of November um, to go and see the Christmas market. So I'm really excited about that. Um, also, another interesting fact about Mark here is that he is related to William Blake, the poet. So that's a bit interesting. So today I thought I would do a bookshelf tour. So here we go. So these are, the, I'm going to do the bookshelves in my living room. So these are the bookshelves in my living room. I've got some classics here and then I've got some uh, sort of historical hardback fiction up there. And then if we come over here, you can see I've got some more books here and then I've got this shelf here. So I will take you through them. So let's start here, shall we? Um, so The Toy Makers, I haven't actually read this and it's weird that I've got a book on my shelf that I haven't actually read. Um, I, I usually have to uh, have to have read a book for it to get onto my bookshelves, which is, I don't know, it's just a weird little thing that I have. Does anyone have anything similar? Um, I've heard wonderful things about this. Um, it looks to me like it might be a bit of a Christmassy book or a winter book, so I might read that uh, this winter, although I've got such a chock-a-block um, sort of autumn and winter reading uh, schedule because of I'm very excited about Victober. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do a lot of reading for that. So that's The Toy Makers. Let me know if you've read that. The next one is From the Wreck. Now this was recommended to me by uh, the wonderful Simon of, over at Savage Reads. He is a big advocate for this book in case you didn't know. Look at that. Um, so yeah, this is a Victorian historical fiction um, uh, novel set in Australia, which was so interesting to read about. You never really hear of um, historical fiction written in Australia, or at least I don't anyway. This was such an interesting book. It flitted from sort of uh, really uh, well-rounded, plot-driven um, uh, historical fiction to sort of almost stream of consciousness, otherworldly narrative as well. So, it, yeah, it was such an interesting book. I've never read anything like it before, and I really enjoyed it. So, yeah, do pick this up if that interests you. What have we got here? The Miniaturist by Jessie Burton. Now, I know loads of people love this. It, well, I wasn't such a huge fan. I mean, she's clearly an amazing writer, and she writes some absolutely beautiful scenes in this book. But I just... I, th I thought there were, there were there were a few plot holes and I didn't really understand why she had this idea of the miniaturist in the video, so yeah. But um, I, I can't wait for her next stuff to come out um, and I definitely want to read more by her because she has beautiful writing. Um, the next one here is The Mating Habit of Stags, which I again heard from, from Simon Savage's channel. Uh, this is such a good book. It's sort of, um, it's modern fiction and it looks at... Uh, an elderly gentleman who commits a murder um, in a in a care home, and it's he, about his sort of um, his relationship with another lady, and there and his uh, his sort of escaping around the countryside from from where he lives. So yeah, that was really interesting to read about. Um, the next two are Melnoth and the Essex Serpent, both by Sarah Perry. Um, now the Essex Serpent was incredibly popular. Um, a couple of years back, I know it was the Waterstones Book of the Year. Was it 2015, 2016? Can't remember. Um, I thought it was okay. Um, it was all right. I There was quite a bit of it I didn't really get. But oh my God, Melmoth was such a good book. It's so creepy. It's so atmospheric. Every line of it had me absolutely 
enthralled and what a cover i mean both of them really are gorgeous covers but yeah really enjoyed melmos so do give that a read don't be put off if you didn't like the essex serpent it is quite different um and then we have a couple more um a couple more sort of uh modern fiction books and um, we have the girl at the door um by veronica ramo we have the heavens by sarah newman sorry i meant sandra and we also have my sister the serial killer by ayanka braithwaite so I really did not like The Girl at the Door by Veronica Romo. Um, it's described as the first kind of Me Too novel, but it really, I mean, don't approach this book thinking that because I did and it really let the book, the book really kind of um, didn't meet my expectations. Um, yeah, I just, I really didn't like it. The Heavens, I quite liked, I, although it's weird because usually I'm such a fan of historical fiction, um, but the historical fiction bits in this, so, that, so for anyone who doesn't know, The Heavens by Sandra Newman is, um, it is set both in modern day New York um, and, well, sort of New York in the year 2000-ish, um, and in England in the 16th century, so... I was really looking forward to the historical fiction parts of this and I didn't really enjoy them. But I did really enjoy the modern day bits of it, which uh, surprised me. So yeah, let me know if you've read The Heavens and what you thought of it. And then obviously, here we go, My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyankam Braithwaite. I bloody loved this. Um, <coughs> God, goodness me, I'm very out of breath, aren't I? And what I'm doing is standing here talking about my books. Um, so My Sister the Serial Killer, I really, really, really enjoyed this. It's very fast paced. It's very quick uh, to read. Um, a lot of people, well, not a lot of people, but some people have said that they found it too plot driven. They didn't give enough time for characterization. Um, and I can kind of understand that. But this, uh, Ayankan Braithwaite's writing really... Um, she does a lot with very few words, and I really liked that. There's a scene in this book, well, a couple of scenes, where there are two sisters talking about their childhood, and you kind of come to understand a lot of the things that have happened in their childhood just from a very few words. So, yeah, I absolutely adored this book. Let's put them back, shall we? Oh, my goodness, we're all the way over here. Um, we've, got, we've got a long way to go, guys. Um, Sarah Winman, Tin Man, what a book. Um, again, found out about, actually, I found about, I found out about all of these four, again, through Simon at Savage Reads. Um, Sarah Winman, Tin Man is just absolutely gorgeous, LGBT novel, um, absolutely heartbreaking, as is um, On Earth, We're Briefly Gorgeous. It's just such stunning writing here um, from Ocean Vuong. It really, really took me in and I just couldn't believe what I was reading. I was like, my God, this is modern day fiction, like at its best. This is, it was absolutely enthralling and gorgeous and I loved every bloody minute of it. Um, the Wicked Cometh by Laura Carlin. Now, now I know that Dame Laura Yates, um, my sister's girlfriend, really enjoyed this and I loved it too. This is sort of historical fiction set in uh, the Victorian period. Uh, really enjoyed that. And then Beasts of Extraordinary Circumstance, that is that sort of um, caught me off guard, really. I really enjoyed it. It's it's uh, sort of magical realism. Um, yeah, I, I, there's not too much I can say about that without ruining the plot, but I was really surprised and I really liked it. Lionel Shriver, The Standing Chandelier, the less said about that, the better. Um, and then we have, obviously, the gorgeous, wonderful, great expectations by Charles Dickens. This is such a gorgeous edition. This is one of the cloth-bound classics. Um, usually I have my classics in the Black Penguin editions, but I got this um, because it's just gorgeous, really. Look at it. Um, for anyone who hasn't read Great Expectations, it is a wonderful place to start with Charles Dickens. I've had quite a few people um, <clears throat> on my comments recently saying that they're going to start reading Charles Dickens, and it is a wonderful, wonderful place to start. It's written in the first person. Um, so it's very easy to digest and read. I heard about this from Katie over at Books and Things, and she was saying that this and David Copperfield are brilliant places to start with historical fiction. What is wrong with me today? I meant Charles Dickens. And then we've got Ghost War by Sarah Moss, which I thought was okay-ish. Uh, My Policeman by Bethan Roberts, which I thought was gorgeous. Absolutely beautifully written. Another LGBT um novel but this time set in i believe the 1950s 1960s something like that um really 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 enjoyed that um can't wait wait to read more of her work and then one of my favorite books of the year 
The Wonder by Emma Donoghue. This is absolutely captivating and wonderfully written and absolutely gorgeous. And I just cannot talk highly enough about this book. I bloody loved it. Um, it follows the story of a young nurse named Libby um, who goes over to Ireland to keep an eye on a young girl who is said to have not eaten for a long time and it's said to be a miracle that she is still alive um, and it's her, it's her journey trying to find out what's actually happening with this girl and it is so amazingly written. I bloody love this book. Again, I heard about it from Katie over at Books and Things, so thank you, Katie, for your recommendations. Keep them coming. Love, love, love that. Um, next up, we have two books. We have Murmur um, by Will Eaves. Oh, oh my goodness. And we have Murmur by... Will oh my god. Third time lucky. We have Murmur by Will Eaves, and we have How to Be a Tudor by Ruth Goodman. So these couldn't be two more different books, really. Um, Murmur by Will Eaves is the fictionalised tale of um, the true story of a LGBT character from history. I thought it was okay. Um, no, actually, I didn't. That's a lie. I really didn't like it. It's way too literary for me, and it, a lot of it just went over my head. Um, I read it, and as soon as I put it down, Mark asked me what it was about, and I, I had no idea. I couldn't tell him, so... That's that, although I have heard from Simon at Savage Reads that um, he has other books which are less literary. Um, How to Be a Tudor by Ruth Goodman. This was fab. So I really, really want to be, read How to Be a Victorian as part of my Victober TBR. Um, I did my Victober TBR video, so I'll link that down below if I can. Um, but I didn't include the How to Be a Victorian book because um, I'll only get to it if I have time. But this is sort of uh, Ruth Goodman's journey through the day of an F of an average Tudor person, really. And it's really, really interesting. It goes into a lot of detail about how they lived their lives, what they ate, how they slept, how they learned, um, what they wore, all of those kind of things. So it's, I love that it wasn't focused on... Um, it wasn't focused on uh, sort of the Tudor monarchy, but focused on the average Tudor, which I really, really loved. What's next? What is next? We have Ali Smith Winter and The Vegetarian by Han Kang. I loved both of these books. Um, I was sent, I was given Ali Smith Winter as a Christmas present from a, a person at work, one of my friends at work. Um, and I absolutely loved it, really, really enjoyed it. This is the first time of me reading Ali Smith and, and really enjoyed it. I didn't know if I would or not, um, but it was just absolutely gorgeous and looked at mental health in a really interesting way, as does The Vegetarian by Han Kang. So um, The Vegetarian looks at a lady in Korea being accused of mental health issues when she decides not to eat meat anymore. And it's about her journey through that process and the thoughts of her loved ones and friends as she um, as she stops eating meat, really. Next up, we have As Meat Loves Salt. And actually, I'll talk about it at the same time as The Sleep of Death, a Shakespearean murder mystery. So As Meat Loves Salt by Maria McCann is a gorgeous, wonderful, lovely book. Um, it is incredibly gritty and moving. It's set in the 1640s in the English Civil War. I did this as a buddy read with booktube superstar Simon Savage, and um, I couldn't have had a better experience for my first um, buddy read. I really, really, really enjoyed it and really enjoyed reading it with Simon. Um, it was just an absolute bloody hoot, really. Uh, the story is incredibly moving. As I said, very gritty, some bloody fantastic characters in there, including a a, uh, a Tudor maid who um, comes to find out more than she should. Let's just put it that way. So yeah, as Meat Loves Salt. And then A Sleep of Death is an absolute crap fest. Um, this, was, uh, this is a Shakespearean murder mystery. I really didn't like this. Again, I, I think I've said about this before on this channel, I found it weird that... Um, I find it weird in historical fiction when people have really modern names. So a couple of the characters in here are called like Ian and Janet. And I just found that really bizarre. I mean, those may well have been authentic um, Tudor names or Elizabethan names, but I don't know, just felt a bit weird. Um, and the plot was OK, but yeah, the rest of the book was a bit dodge. So 
So the last three books I want to talk about are J.K. Rowling, The Casual Vacancy, The Black Death by John Hatcher, and The Secret History of Georgian London by Dan Cruikshank. So for anyone who doesn't know, J.K. Rowling is an author. Um, she wrote an underground indie um, series called Harry Potter. Um, no one really has heard of it. I think I'm the first booktuber to kind of talk about it. Um, but you can probably find her Harry Potter books in in your local bookshop. Um, so this is her uh, her book that she wrote after the Harry Potter series, The Casual Vacancy. It's set in um, uh, in England, in modern day England, and it looks at social structures and um, the youth of sort of rural England in a very, very, very interesting way. And I absolutely adored this book. I would recommend it to anyone who likes JK Rowling's very easy to read writing style. Um, the next one is The Black Death by John Hatcher. This is the book that got me back into reading as an adult. It follows the story of um, a village in crisis, as the as the title says here, um, from the years 1345 to 1350. So it's uh, the story of the village as they face and then endure the Black Death that is ravaging England at that time and most of Europe. Then, finally, for part one, we have The Secret History of George and London by Dan Cruikshank. This is beautiful. It's so interesting. So this is a non-fiction book looking at um, George and London and the sex trade, basically, in George and London. And I find that sort of thing so interesting. I am obsessed with Victorian and George and London. Um, I find it so, so, so interesting. It's a bit of a chunkster, but it's well worth getting into if... Um, if if that sort of thing interests you, if any, if you, if anyone likes um, Lucy Worsley's documentaries or uh, sort of history documentaries, then I think you will really 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 enjoy this. So there we have it. That is part one of my bookshelf tour. So that's those books. In part two, I'll be talking about those books and then maybe those books. And then I think I'll probably do part three, just looking at these gorgeous lot here. So yes, thank you very much for watching and I will see you again next time. Thanks, bye.